In this section, we will review some basic electrical definitions, base units, talk more about power, and introduce the concept of electrical energy as it relates to power. The generic circuit is comprised of basic components such as a power source, conductors, protective devices, control devices, and loads. In order for a current to flow in a circuit, a closed conducting path must exist for the electrons to flow through. If this path does not exist, current cannot flow. Conductors provide connectivity between components in a circuit and are usually a low resistance wire. Electron flow is shown in this diagram. Electrons flow from the negative terminal on the power source through the circuit and back to the positive terminal on the power source. There is also a conventional current flow convention, where current flows from the positive terminal of a power source through the circuit to the negative terminal of the power source. The power source provides the potential difference or electromotive force that causes current to flow in a circuit. It provides the energy or power to the circuit that enables a circuit to perform its intended function. The protective device is sensitive to the amount of current flowing in the circuit. If the current exceeds a specified amount, the protective device will open the circuit and break the conducting path in order to halt the flow of electrons. The load is the reason the circuit exists. It provides the desired functions such as providing a light, spinning a shaft, computing, or playing music. The control device is used to turn the circuit on and off. Key points to remember are that the generic components that make up an electrical circuit are the power source, the conductors, the control device, the load, and the protective device. Recall also that a conducting path must exist in order for current to flow in the circuit. Two current conventions exist in industry, electron flow and conventional current flow. You may encounter both of them. You can use whichever you are most comfortable with. They both produce the same result. Voltage is the difference in charge between two points. One volt has been defined as the amount of charge difference that will produce a one amp current through a resistance of one ohm. Voltage is also called electromotive force. It is a quantitative expression of the potential difference in charge between two points in an electric field. For electrons to flow in any conductor or component, there must be a source of electromotive force, EMF, or voltage. Electromotive force can be produced by a variety of different primary energy sources. Current is the rate of flow of electrons in a circuit. Current is moving electrons. Since the electron represents an extremely small charge, a more useful unit for charge has been defined. It is the Coulomb. One Coulomb equals the charge of 6.25 times 10 to the 18 electrons. One ampere has been defined as the rate of flow of one Coulomb per second. Current flowing in a circuit is measured with an ammeter. The unit of measure is the ampere. The ammeter must be placed in series with the current it is measuring. In other words, the current must pass through the meter. Ammeters are very low resistance instruments. They are designed to measure current flow without appreciably affecting other parameters in the circuit. Since ammeters have a low resistance, they must never be connected across a power source as they can be damaged or destroyed by the resulting high currents. Voltmeters have very large internal impedances and are connected in parallel with the component being measured. Voltmeters make measurements in units of volts. For example, to measure the voltage produced by a battery, the voltmeter will be connected in parallel with the battery. In order to measure the voltage across a load, the voltmeter is connected in parallel with the load. Generally, voltmeter internal resistance is so large it will not impact the circuit parameters in the circuit that it is being used in. However, if you are working with a circuit that has very high values of resistance, you need to be aware that a voltmeter can impact the measurement accuracy and the proper operation of such a circuit. This is a rare occurrence. Most of the time, the voltmeter will produce accurate results. Resistance is the opposition to the flow of current in a circuit. The primary use for the resistor is to control the flow of current in the circuit. Resistance is measured in ohms using an ohmmeter. A multimeter can be used to make a resistance measurement since one of its many measurement functions is the ohmmeter. The item being measured must be removed electrically from a circuit and must not be powered, as this can damage the instrument and cause faulty measurements. Never use an ohmmeter on a live circuit. Proper use of a meter protects the meter and its operator from damage and injury. 
Here are a few very important guidelines for the use of meters. Never use an ohmmeter on a live circuit. Never connect an ammeter in parallel with a voltage source. Use proper range settings. Do not overload a meter. Do not short terminals using meter probes. Never measure unknown high voltages. Find out the range before attaching a meter. Check for frayed or broken meter leads. Avoid touching exposed meter probes. If possible, connect the meter to the measurement points before applying power to the circuit. When connecting a meter to a live circuit, work with one hand at your side to lessen the danger of a shock. To reduce the danger of accidental shock, disconnect meter leads immediately after completing a measurement. No matter how careful you are, you will make some mistakes using a meter. Just make a mental note to try and make as few mistakes as possible. We have already talked about the fact that resistors oppose and control the flow of current in a circuit and that resistance is measured in ohms with an ohmmeter. Resistors are used in transistor circuits to set the voltage bias on transistors. In amplifier circuits, resistors are used to set the gain on operational amplifiers. The resistor symbol is a sideways group of Zs. Resistors are represented on a schematic using this symbol along with a letter R1 for the first resistor with subsequent resistors marked as R2, R3, etc. Resistors are connected in series and in parallel configurations in circuits. Looking at the series circuit representation, you can see that the resistors are arranged sequentially in series one after the other and are designated R1, R2, and so on on the schematic. Also, each resistor is further specified by its ohmic value. It is also common for power rating and accuracy of the resistor to be placed on the schematic. In a series circuit, the same current flows through all of the components, one after the other, and the sum of the voltage drops across each resistor adds up to be equal to the source voltage. In a parallel circuit, the resistors are all connected electrically to the same potential. They are all at the same voltage. In this case, the sum of the currents through each resistor equals the total current flowing through the power supply into the circuit. Ohm's law is the single most important equation in the electrical world. It enables us to calculate and predict circuit behavior and performance in advance using mathematics. In this chart, equations for current, voltage, and resistance are specified. Current equals voltage divided by resistance, or I equals V divided by R. Current is represented by the letter I, voltage by the letter V, and resistance by the letter R. To find voltage V, current is multiplied by the resistance, or V equals I times R. And to find resistance, voltage is divided by current, or R equals V divided by I. You must memorize these equations and know how to apply them in order to solve circuit problems. Let's review the three variables in Ohm's law. Voltage is represented in equations by the symbol capital V, EMF, or capital E. EMF is electromotive force. The unit of measure for voltage is volts or voltage, and its symbol is V. Voltage is the pressure which makes current flow in a circuit. When you write down the number that represents a voltage, you write down the number followed by the capital letter V. And when you refer to a voltage number, you say, for example, 10 volts. Current is represented by the letter I in equations. Its unit of measure is the ampere, denoted by the capital letter A. Current is the rate of flow of electrons. When you refer to measurement of current, you say, for example, 5 amps. When you write out 5 amps, you write the number 5 followed by the capital letter A. Resistance is represented by the letter capital R in equations. Its unit of measure is the ohm, denoted by the Greek letter omega. Resistance is the opposition to the flow of current. When you refer to a measurement of resistance, you say, for example, 1,000 ohms, or write out 1,000 followed by the omega symbol. When working with numbers and measurements, always write the symbol after the number. This way, you will not get your voltage, current, and resistance numbers mixed up as you work. And also remember that volts, amperes, and ohms are the base units for Ohm's law. You must have all of your units in the base units in order to get correct values when using Ohm's law. You must convert millivolts to volts, microamps to amps, and so on in Ohm's law. Power is the amount of energy converted from one form to another in a given length of time. Another way to state this is that power is the rate at which energy is transferred. 
Power is energy divided by time. In electrical terms, power is equal to voltage times current. The unit for power is the watt. So we can write that watt equals voltage times current, or P equals V times I, where P equals power, V equals voltage, and I equals current. You should remember this relationship. Power is lost to heat in transmission lines. This is true for the power company as it transfers power across the state to your home, as well as for the extension cord that you may use to power your pressure washer. The relationship for this power loss can be derived as shown on the left from the two equations, V equals I times R and P equals V times I. If V equals I times R is substituted into P equals V times I, then we get that power equals I squared times R. You may have already heard the expression I squared R loss. If so, this is where it comes from. It is basically the power dissipated in a resistive loss. For the power company, it represents lost revenue since the power company only gets paid for power delivered to its customers. The two main criteria for choosing or selecting a power cable are the power loss and voltage loss in the cable. Both of these parameters are affected by the diameter and length of the wire cable. The larger the cable, the less its resistance will be. The longer a cable, the greater its resistance will be. In selecting a wire size, you would go to a wire chart and select a wire size that would meet your voltage drop allotment and be able to handle the current and power loss that is specified. Base units must be used for computing power in watts. In the power equation, voltage must be volts and current must be in amperes. Energy is the ability to do work. Energy is measured in joules or kilowatt hours. Energy is stored in a battery or a gallon of gasoline or stored in water behind a dam. Stored energy is referred to as potential energy. Or energy may exist in a body in motion. This would be called kinetic energy. Energy can be converted from one form to another. We can convert coal into electricity. We convert electricity into cool air in our homes, for example. The ability to convert energy from one form to a more useful form is the basis for the civilization that we enjoy today. We pay for electricity based on energy used. Example, 10 cents per kilowatt hour. We buy gasoline by the gallon. There's 126 megajoules in a gallon of gasoline. Power is the rate at which energy is transformed or consumed, and power is measured in watts or horsepower. And the basic definition of watt is that one watt equals one joule per second. Going back the other way, one joule equals one watt times one second. Watt times time gives us energy. The power company uses these relationships when it computes your power bill each month. Here is an example of computing energy used in an electric circuit. A 100 watt lamp operates for five minutes. Five minutes times 60 seconds per minute equals 300 seconds. The energy consumed by the lamp is equal to power times time or the energy consumed equals 100 watts times 300 seconds equals 30,000 joules. 30,000 joules equals 30 kilojoules. The electrical energy consumed in our homes is measured using a kilowatt hour meter. Meters such as this compute the energy you use by multiplying power times time. In the case of a kilowatt hour meter, power in kilowatts is multiplied by time in hours. The symbol KWH denotes energy in kilowatt hour. Let's say that you would like to know how much an appliance costs to operate each month. You take the appliance power rating in kilowatts and multiply it times the hours used each month to get the electricity consumed in kilowatt hours for that appliance. This would be 4.2 kilowatts times 20 hours per month equals 84 kilowatt hours per month. The power company charges you by the kilowatt hour for energy consumed. This is usually in cents per kilowatt hour. In this example, the power company charges 12 cents per kilowatt hour, or $0.12 per kilowatt hour. Then the cost per month of operating the appliance is the energy used times the unit cost of that energy. So the appliance would cost 84 kilowatt hours times $0.12 per kilowatt hour equals $10.08 to operate each month.